Hello students, welcome to my class of Astrophysics. Today's topic is Young's double slit experiment, theory of interference of fringe and fringe width. In our previous class, we have learned about the interference of light. What is interference? Now, when two light waves of the same frequency and having zero or constant phase difference traveling in the same direction superpose impose or superpose each other the intensity in the region of superposition gets redistributed becoming maximum at some point and minimum at other point this this phenomena is called interference of light and uh, we already learned about this what is the interference of light when to light of the same frequency and they are moving along the same direction or approximately in the same direction and they superpose that means they meet at a point and uh, what will be the, their result and if after superposition of the two waves there is a redistribution of the light energy that means uh, some point you get the bright one a brighter one and some places and you get the dark one that phenomena is known as the interference of light and there are two types of interference and they taken place simultaneously uh, number one constructive interference when the two superposing waves are in the same phase the amplitude of the two waves get added up and hence the intensity which is directly proportional to the a square amplitude square becomes maximum this is called constructive interference that means at which point they are two waves they meet at the same phase same phase means place to place prop with prop at that places their amplitude added and we know the intensity of the light waves not only light waves but any wave that is directly proportional to the amplitude square since the amplitude increases therefore the intensity of light that means brightness of light at that point increases and similarly destructive interference when the two waves meet in opposite phases at a particular point the amplitude of the two waves get subtracted and hence intensity becomes minimum this is called destructive interference that means both constructive and destructive interference taken place all together and there is no creation or destruction of the light energy it is a one type of redistribution due to the superposition of the two light waves and this phenomena is known as the interference of light. Now question is, the interference always taken place? Here, generally we are saying the light coming from two coherent sources. And they superimpose to each other at a particular point. At that time, we get the interference pattern. That means bright dark, bright dark pattern we can observe on the screen. Now two different independent sources cannot be coherent two different sources even if the light frequency wavelength from the two sources are equal but they cannot be coherent sources let us know first what do you mean by coherent sources coherent sources the two sources of light which continuously emit light waves of same frequency or wavelength which or with uh, zero or constant phase difference between them are called coherent sources. That means light, the two light waves coming from the two different sources. And if the two light sources, the light wave light sources will be said to be coherent. If the two waves meet at a particular point, always will be in the same phase or there will be a constant phase difference with respect to time. And the two sources are coherent sources. And in coherent sources, two sources of light which do not emit light waves with a constant phase difference are called incoherent sources of light. The topics we have already learned in your previous classes, I have just recapitulated it. Now, two independent and other matter, the two independent sources cannot be coherent. This is because of the following reasons. Light emit by individual atoms and not by the bulk matter acting as a whole. That means any source of light the, what is the ultimate source of light that is the atoms or molecules as a whole the object light emitting object that is not emits as a whole the light 
Number two, even a tiniest force consists of millions of atoms and emissions of light by them takes place independently. Number three, even an atom emits an unbroken wave of about 10 to the power minus 8 seconds due to its transition from a higher energy state to a lower energy state. The millions of atoms of a source cannot emit wave in the same phase. The light emitted by the commonly used monochromatic source remains coherent for about 10 to the power minus 8 seconds. After this time, the atoms responsible for the emission of light uh, get changed. The phase difference and hence the interference pattern changes 10 to the power 8 times in one second. Our, our eye cannot see such rapid changes and a uniform illumination is seen on the screen. So two independent light source cannot produce a sustained interference. That means to produce sustained interference, that means if we get the bright and dark regions on the screen, with respect to time, there will be no variation. That is suspended type interference. And then the two source must be coherent. But even if the light coming from the two different sources have the same frequency, same wavelength, but there will be a continuous phase difference with respect to time and change of the phase difference with respect to time. And it change taken place about 10 to the 8 times in a second. Therefore, even if interference taken place, but we cannot observe this. That means we cannot get certain type interference pattern. Now, how can we resolve the problem? The scientist Young, there is our two-way topic, Young's double slit experiment. In 1801, Thomas Young was the first person to demonstrate experimentally the interference of light. In this experiment, a source of monochromatic light, as for example, a sodium paper lamp, it emits yellow. Uh, light illuminates a rectangular narrow slit about one millimeter wide. S1 and S2 are two parallel narrow slits which are arranged symmetrically and parallel to the slit S at a distance of about 10 centimeters from it. That means experimentally the first scientist who have observed the interference pattern by taking the two different sources from the same wave font and how can he arrange it for that young takes one uh, monochromatic source of light that is s let us suppose that is sodium paper lamp and one slit slit means rectangular hole and uh, we only draw here the cross section of that slit and that was about one millimeter that slit width and uh, another two slits, S1 and S2, these are equidistant from the S and these S1 and S2, these two slits also narrower than the S and it is in around 0.5 millimeter of slit width and both are at equal distances. Therefore, light coming from the slit S and reach at the S1 and S2, these are equal distance. Therefore, S1, S2 always will be on the same wave front here. The nature of wave front that will be cylindrical one because here we are taking source as a linear source because it is a slit. Now, S1, S2 always on the same wave front. Therefore, S1, S2 always will be in the same phase. In this way, Young in his experiment developed two coherent sources S1, S2. What wave coming from the next one, but S1, S2 will be on the same wave front. Therefore, S1 and S2 will be always in the same page. And where we describe it, I am setting again. In this experiment, a source of monochromatic light, as for example, a sodium paper lamp, illuminates a rectangular narrow slit S, about one millimeter wide. S1 and S2 are two parallel narrow slits which are arranged symmetrically and parallel to the slit S at a distance of about 10 centimeters from it. That means both are equidistant from the first slit S. The separation between S1 and S2 is about 2 millimeters. That is the distance between the two slits. That means it is about the 2 millimeters, very less distance from the two slits. 
Alternate bright and dark fin band appear on the observation screen. These are called the interference changes. Now, if you take a screen where we have to observe or we will observe the interference pattern, and that is at a large distance comparatively, and that is about around two meters from the slit, but this is only two millimeters and slit with only 0.5 millimeters. But the distance between the slits and the screen that is about 200. Uh, two million two meter that means two thousand millimeters here superposition taken place now how and we get the bright dark bright dark bright dark hinges on this or let me hinges means catches of light on the screen now how young explained this phenomena <clears throat> according to hygiene principle cylindrical wave forms emerge out from places who sections have been shown by the circular arc actually here we are drawing some circular arc but these are the cross section of cylindrical waveform waveform it is a not a line or circle it is a surface and here or the surfaces are cylindrical surfaces so we are here drawing only the lines and arc from we are drawing only the arc circular arc, the solid uh, curves represent the crest and the dotted curves represent the trough. At S, S1 and S, S2, these waves fall on the fleets, S1 and S2 simultaneously, so that the waves fading out from S1 and S2 are in the same page. Thus, S1 and S2 act as two coherent sources of monochromatic light. Interference takes place between the waves diverging from these sources. That means, in this way, Young developed the two more coherent sources of light. These coherent sources are obtained from the same waveform, and we know at any point on the same waveform, these are always will be in the same phase of vibration. Therefore, initially, S1 and S2, these two will be in the same phase of vibration, and we know from the hygiene consideration, hygiene principle. At each and every point of the wave front, it just behaves like a source of secondary wavelet and it emits light in all directions. There are wavelets, they are passes in all directions from the S1 and S2. And here, uh, the solid lines that represent the crest, let us suppose, and the dotted line prop, paste, and prop, paste, and prop in this way. And when light comes from the S1 and S2, they overlapping, that means superpose to each other. And here, along this line, if we proceed, we are observing here the dotted line with the dotted line, solid line with solid line, dotted line with dotted line. That indicates the, the uh, along this line, if we proceed, light waves coming from the two sources, S1, S2, they meet at the same phase, that means crest with crest and crop with crop. As a result, the resultant amplitude will be added up. That means that will be more than previous, and we know when amplitude increases, the intensity increases proportionally to the square of the amplitude. Similarly, if we proceed along this line, then uh, dotted line with solid line, dotted line with solid line, that means rest of one waves that superimpose with the drop of another, crest drop, crest drop, that means along this line, if we proceed, the two waves superimpose in opposite phases, therefore the resultant amplitude will be less. And, uh, Along this line, if we proceed to the screen, that point P1, here we will get one dark fringes. That means the resultant in amplitude will be minimum, and here the point will be said to be in destructive interference, and here P2 is a in constructive interference. The central point, light waves which are uh, incident on the O point, all these are will be in the same phase, therefore they will make a constructive interference pattern. Now, at the points on the screen where the waves meet with the same phase, as for example, point O, P2, P2, etc., etc., the amplitude of the two waves get added up. And hence, the intensity, which is I very J square, becomes maximum. And the constructive interference taken place. Similarly, at point where waves meet with opposite phases, the amplitude of the two waves get subtracted and hence intensity becomes minimum and the destructive interference taken place. So on 
the observation screen we obtain a number of alternate bright and dark fringes parallel to the two slits in this way successfully young uh, experiment uh, observed experimentally observed that the bright fringe and dark fringe that means constructive and destructive interference or as a whole interference pattern on the screen and uh, in this experiment uh, it is very important that young uh, obtain two uh, coherent sources s1 s2 on the same wave front therefore always s1 s2 will be the same phase now why expression for the fringe width fringe means the bright and dark spotted that is the fringe and uh, uh, we observe this type of pattern if we uh, observe one uh, uh, this one it is will be the just like interference pattern it is the interference pattern and uh, the light color is a yellow color it is the central fringe and it is a central bright maxima or central bright fringe it is the first secondary maxima it is also secondary maxima and it is a minima and if we observe with the help of laser red laser then we will observe on the screen this type of interference with the help of the double slit experiment and this type of observation uh, was obtained and it is one real figure diagram picture diagram of the interference fringe this is one fringe it is one of the bright fringe it is a dark fringe it is a bright fringe and dark fringe now we have to find out the uh, expression for the fringe width in young double slit experiment that means that is also known as a theory of interference of the interference fringes or theory of interference of light or theory of young double slit experiment and above we have studied there is a description of the young double slit experiment and it is a theory of young or expression for the fringe which is known as the theory of interference let us suppose a narrow slit s is illuminated by monochromatic light of wavelength lambda that means the we have already taken the source s and light coming from that source monochromatic light and wavelength is lambda s1 s2 are two narrow slits at equal distance from s being derived from the same parent sources s the slit s1 and s2 acts as two coherent sources separated by small distance that is a small d that means i have drawn again it s is the first uh, slit and that is main source of light s1 s2 another two slits these are two equal distance from the s therefore these two always will be in the same wave front now s1 and s2 becomes two coherent sources of light always s1 and s2 or light emitting from s1 and s2 always will be in the same phase that means the difference between all waves they are emitting from s1 s2 will be the zero now interference fringe are obtained at a screen at placed at capital d and obviously the capital d quite larger than the small d small value of the small d that is the separation between the two slates that is in the millimeter order about the two millimeter whereas the d that will be about the two meter order that means thousand times more now on the screen p any point on the screen o is the central point on the screen and after the interference after the superposition of light waves coming from the two sources s1 s2 we will obtain this type of pattern here it is a graph that means in this direction it gives the amount of intensity of light along this and it is the space at the central point that is point o point we get a central bright fringes and continually next to dark and bright dark and bright obviously at the lower part also on the screen we get the dark and bright dark and bright fringes now let us consider point p on the screen at a distance x from the center o that means central point o we are taking it is along the x axis you may take also the along the y axis it may be but here uh, we are taking here it is the, along the x axis and o is the origin the point p position of the point p that is at a distance x from the o point now at a point p light coming from the two sources s1 and s2 obviously the there is a path difference between s1 p and s2 p that means light coming from the two sources coherent sources but when they reach at the point p there is a path difference and we know if the path difference is integral multiple of the lambda then light 
coming from the two sources on S2, they will meet at the same edge at point P. Let us consider the point P on the screen at distance x from the center O. The nature of interference at the point depends on path difference. That means what is the path difference? And in this figure diagram, it is clear that S2P is greater than S1P and path difference is the S2P minus S1P is the path difference. Initially, we have to find out the numerical value or mathematics of the path difference and then the, what will be the nature of the uh, pattern, interference pattern, constructive or destructive or between them that depends upon this path difference. And uh, to find out this path difference, we have to take the help of simple geometry. Now, in this triangle, in this triangle, we can write in this triangle, triangle A, P, A, S, 1. It is a right angle and this distance, S1, A, that is equal to the capital D. And we know we have taken the distance O to P, that is X. And S1, S2, the distance is the small d, that is the distance in the two states. Therefore, O A, that is D by 2, obviously O B, that is also D by 2. That is half of the distance between two slits. Now, what is the distance A P? That is the A X minus D by 2. And what is the distance E B? That will be A X plus D by 2. Now, in this right angle triangle, which right angle triangle? S1 P A right angle triangle. S1 P square equal to S1 A square plus A P square. And we know it is a D square and it is a X minus D by 2 whole square. Similarly, S2 P square in this right angle triangle S2 P B, it is a right angle. This distance is a D and it is a X plus D by 2. Therefore, S2 P square that will be d square plus x plus d by 2 whole square and we have written here all these things from the right angle triangle s2 b b and s1 a p s2 p square minus s1 p square from the right angle s2 b whole square plus c b square minus s1 a whole square plus a p square we can easily obtain from the Pythagoras theorem this expression that means s2 p square equal to d square plus d square now it is the this is the d square plus x plus d by 2 whole square pb is a pb pb is nothing but the x plus d by 2 what is that small d now small d is the distance between two slits d by 2 whole square now <clears throat> and uh, this one what is the s1 p square that is s1 a square plus a p square and S1, S square, that is nothing but the D square and plus X minus D by 2 whole square. And if we, if we expand it, D square plus X square plus D square by 4 plus 2 into X into D by 2 minus X square minus X square minus D square by 4 minus into minus plus 2 into X into D by 2. And uh, here we are observing D square D plus D square minus D square plus x square minus x square plus d square by 4 minus d square by 4. Therefore, all these we cancel out each other. And from these two, we get that is the xd plus x into d, that is the 2xd. Now, s2p whole square minus s1p whole square is equal to 2x into d. I am telling again, what is the x? Uh, that is the position of the point p, that is the distance x from the central point or origin on the screen to the point P, that is the X, and what is the small d? That is the slit distance between the two slits, S1 and S2. And we get that is 2X into D. Now, S2P square minus S1P square, that is nothing but S2P minus S1P, whole into S2P plus S1P. And S2P minus S1P, that will be 2XP divided by S2P plus S1P. In practice, the point P lies very close to O. Therefore, S1P and S2P, that is equal to approximately D. That means here, the P is very near a point, and the distance from the O, that is only few millimeters. But this distance is around the two meters. And this is a very small distance. Therefore, we can consider S1P and S2P nearly equal to the capital D. So in this equation, if we place here S2P is the D and S1P is the D, then this here we cannot put this value. Therefore, that equation will be meaningless. 
and uh, insignificant. Therefore, we cannot put here d minus d that will be zero. That will be uh, that will have not no significance at all. Therefore, we when we consider something that may uh, could be or must be a significant one, and here we are putting the value of s two p is a d and s one p is a d. Therefore, two s d divided by two capital D, and from that we get the Path difference that is the x d by capital D and that is very very important one. What is the path difference in terms of the x? X is the represent the position of the point P on the screen. D is the distance between two slits and capital D is the distance between the slit and the uh, screen. And the position of the bright fringes. Now we know the what will be the uh, nature of the interference pattern that may be bright or dark that depends upon the path difference for a constructive interference the path difference that will be x d divided by capital d that must be equal to n into lambda either path difference will be zero or lambda or two lambda or three lambda that means integral multiple of the lambda then the two ways they will meet at that point in the same phase or at the same phase therefore constructive interference taken place already we have studied or learned it in our previous class what are the different conditions same phase difference and the path difference path difference means when the path difference either zero or lambda because initially when they are emitted two light waves they are coming from s1 s2 initially always s1 s2 in the same phase that means when they are emitted, they are at the same phase. But when they meet at point P, there will be a phase difference and it is due to the path difference. But if the light coming from S1, S2, the point O directly, in such a case, S1, O and S2, O, these two paths are equal. Therefore, no path difference at all. At that point, they also meet at the same phase. That means either path difference zero or if it is the integral multiple of the lambda, then at that point we get the position of the constructive interference that means light waves uh, they are meeting at the same phase clearly the position of the various bright fringes as follows for the n is equal to zero because here we are considering n is equal to zero one two three etc n is equal to zero that is x let us suppose there is a x naught or x zero that will be zero because if you multiply it with the help of zero then it will be zero that means it is the position of the central bright fringes and what is the position of the first bright fringes? That is the x1, let us suppose. And uh, if we put the one in place of n, then d lambda divided by d, that is the first bright fringes. And what is the position of the second bright fringes? That will be the two capital D lambda by d, that is second bright fringes. Similarly, for the nth bright fringes, what will be the position on the screen? xn, xn is the distance from the origin and uh, the point of the point p on the screen that is xn that is n into d lambda by small d and which is equal to nth bright fringes now another thing at the same time when we get the bright fringes we also will have also the dark fringes because only bright fringe cannot be obtained and there is a law of conjunction of energy and here at the bright fringes that is brighter than normal conditions it does not integrate light uh, created here actually light energy redistributed if we get one bright one then we have to also get one dark and just never of the bright fringes then what will be the position of the dark fringes now for the dark fringes we know the path difference um, dark fringes that is where the uh, destructive interference taken place uh, the way two waves they meet at the opposite edges and it is possible when the path difference that will be the odd multiple of the lambda by two half of the wavelength and it is a condition for the path difference x is equal to 2n minus 1 d lambda divided by 2d here be careful n is started from 1 to 3 because there will be no central dark therefore there will be no n equal to 0 now x is equal to 2n minus 1 d lambda by 2d and where n is equal to 1 2 3 etc clearly the position of the various dark fringes are as follows for n is equal to 1 that is x dash or x1 dash that is half into if you put one here it will be half into d lambda by d first dark fringe for the second dark fringe you have to put the n is equal to two then we get the position on the screen uh, for the second dark fringe that is the 
second minima, you can say it is the first minima position, second minima position, so that is 3 by 2 d 11 over d. And for the nth dark change or nth minima, Mm, from the central point O, the distance x n that will be uh, 2n minus 1 d lambda divided by 2 d, where capital D is the distance between the slits and the screen, lambda is the wavelength of the light, and small d is the separation between the two slits. There will be a bright fringe at the central O. Ultimately, what are the observations? There will be a bright fringe at the center O, but as we move from O upwards, or downwards, alternate dark and bright fringes are found. Now, now our main target, what will be the fringe width? It is the separation between two successive bright or dark fringes. Width of the dark fringe, that is the separation between the two successive bright fringes, and width of the bright fringe, that is the separation between two con uh, consecutive dark fringes. And be careful about it. When we want to find out the width of the bright fringe, that means it is a distance between two successive dark fringes. It is the width of the bright fringes or successive minima. But when we want to find out the distance between the two, uh, what is the width of the dark fringes and distance between the two successive maxima, that is. Now uh, we will observe the value of the dark, uh, width of the dark fringe and the bright fringe, these will be equal. That means fringe width for both the bright and dark fringes will be equal. So width of the dark fringe, when you will ask the, to find out the width of the dark fringe, then we have to uh, find out the separation between two successive bright, that means maxima. And already we know xn nth bright fringe position minus xn minus one the bright fringe position. And that will be n capital D lambda by small d minus n minus one capital D lambda divided by small d. And after subtraction, we get that is beta dash is the D lambda divided by small d. And it is the width of the dark fringes because we are calculating here distance between two maxima. And that gives the result the width of the dark fringes. And when you will ask to find out the width bright with the bright fringes then we have to find out the distance between or separation between two conjugative dark or minima. That is x n dust minus x n dust n minus one. Now from putting this value from this equation, x n dust, the position of the n dark fringes and n minus one dark fringes, we get uh, in place of n we, here, we have to put n minus one minus one d lambda by d. And ultimately, after the calculation, we get again capital D lambda divided by small d. And it is the width of the bright fringe. That means distance between two successive minima. And it is a distance between two successive maxima. That is the capital D lambda divided by small d. It is the capital D lambda divided by small d. Hence, the expression for the fringe width in Young's double sheet experiment can be written as. Now we can write that is beta is equal to D lambda by d irrespective of the dark fringe or bright fringe in both uh, fringe width in, in this case, in this interference pattern, on the both fringe width, both the dark and bright fringe width are equal to each other. Here, since beta is independent of the n, that is order of the fringes, here when we subtract, here also to find out the dark fringe or to find out the bright fringe, the, there will, the final result, there is no term of the n. That means it is independent of the uh, order. Therefore, all the fringes are equal width. In the case of light, lambda is extremely small. And D should be much uh, larger than the capital small D so that the fringe width beta, that is D lambda by D, may be appreciable and hence observable. Then um, why? Uh, there is a question why we take a, such a large distance capital D comparable to the small d. Because in this expression, the fringe width that is capital D lambda divided by small d. Since lambda is very, very less in the order of the 10 to the minus 6 meter. And d and very small. Therefore, d should be, the ratio of the capital D by small d should be high, such that the value of beta that could be accessible and that can be visible to us. If beta is very, very small, we cannot 
separate the bright and dark fringes that means we cannot get the or see the interference pattern measurement of the wavelength of experimentally <clears throat> now uh, if we uh, can measure the beta or by measuring the distance d small d beta from this equation with the help of this equation we can measure also the wavelength of the light measurement of the wavelength of experimentally Young double slit experiment can be used to determine the wavelength of a monochromatic light. The interference pattern is obtained in the focal plane of micrometer eyepiece, and with its help, since with beta is measured by measuring the distance small d between the two coherent sources and their distance d from the eyepiece, the value of wavelength lambda can be calculated as. Lambda is equal to beta d divided by capital D. That means in this experiment, by measuring the distance between the two slits, small d, that is around the two millimeters, and obviously uh, it uh, is measured with the help of traveling microscope. Beta, uh, the fringe width that is taken place on the uh, screen of the micrometer eyepiece, and with the help of the crosswire and scale, we can also measure the value of the beta. And with the help of normal scale, we can measure the capital D because capital D is larger one. We can use the uh, normal scale to measure the capital D. And by measuring all these and putting all these data in this equation, we can find out the what is the wavelength of the uh, light used in this experiment. Now, with of the central bright bright fringes, already we have stated it. All the bright fringes have the same width. Obviously, the central bright fringe also have the same width, and when we consider only the central bright fringe, in Young double slit experiment, the width of the central bright fringes is equal to the distance between the dark fringes on the two sides of the central bright fringe. That means, uh, uh, around the point O, there will be two consecutive uh, dark positions on both sides of the central point. And that distance between the first dark fringe on the two sides of the central bright fringes is known as the width of the central bright fringe. So that the width of the central bright fringes is given by 2 into x1 dash. x1 dash is equal to d lambda divided by 2 into small d. That is the distance of the first minima on both sides, on either side of the central maxima point O. Therefore, the distance between two uh, dark um, around the, uh, about the central point, that is the fringe width of the central bright fringe. And again, we get it is the d lambda divided by small d. If you asked only to find out the central bright fringe, then we can use this process. Otherwise, it is also equal uh, to any bright uh, fringe with of any bright or any dark fringes that is capital d lambda by small d now angular with another <coughs> popular term there is an angular width okay since as all the bright and dark fringes are of the same width the angular width of a fringe is given by theta is equal to beta divided by d therefore the what by putting the value of the beta capital d lambda by small d into d and the d and d these cancel out the theta will be lambda by d now what is the theta now what is the angle subtended by this bright fringe at the slit position and theta is the lambda by d it is independent of the capital d that means if we increase what is the theta in this figure diagram we can observe it <coughs> the angle this one it is the theta angle that is angular width there is a d1 and d2 these two are the two dark positions and what is the angle subtended by this beta at the slit positions that angle is known as the angular width and beta is a linear width and from that relation we know that s is equal to r into theta in this case this theta will be the s divided by d that means we have for the distance uh o, so we can find out this now we from this concept we can get the angular uh, angular fringe width 
the angular change rate that is independent of the d that means if we increase the separation between the fluids and the and d there will be no change in the angular width but when d increases the beta increases that means we get larger width of the uh, bright or dark fringes if we increase the capital d but there will be no change in the angular fringe width angular fringe width that is always equal to the lambda divided by small d what is the lambda now wavelength of the light used and small d that is the distance between two slits in young double slit experiment apparatus if it is the image in a liquid now if you ask then the total setup is now imaged in liquid with reflective index mu is there will be any change in the fringe width obviously there will be change in the fringe width because the same wavelength of the, the same light when it is imaged in the another or kept in another medium and the wavelength of that light will decrease according to the reflective index of that medium and the, the lambda dash that will be lambda divided by mu that means one by mu times of the lambda will be the new wavelength obviously therefore the fringe with new fringe with that will be d capital d lambda dash by small d and by putting the value of the lambda dash lambda divided by mu and we get that will be equal to the beta divided by mu that means the beta dash that will be beta by mu uh, mu is the reflective index of that medium therefore there will be change in the fringe width if we imagine that the whole set up within a or a cap in another medium which reflective index the mu angular position the nth bright fringes angular positions that means theta n that is x n divided by d s is equal to r theta according to this formula theta is the s by r s in this case arc and d is the r so x uh, theta n and the nth position of the position that is x n divided by d and uh, that x n by d is nothing but the n into uh, lambda by d if we put the value of this x n and this where uh, n is equal to 0 1 2 3 4 these are the angular positions and angular positions of the n the dark range obviously that will be x n dash divided by d if we put the value of the x n dash and d and we get this expression these are the angular positions on the screen angular positions these are the angular positions angular positions linear positions on the screen as a whole now if we just drop this one uh, the total interference the young double sheet experiment uh, we can understand all the phenomena all the, already we are described here uh, with the help of this single figure diagram it is uh, let us suppose one interference pattern young double sheet interference pattern o point is the central point it is one change and it is another second second it is the third sorry it is the first um, secondary maxima second secondary maxima it is the central maxima and on the left side on the other side of the central point o or origin o we also have uh, the fringes bright fringes now if a only single source is the intensity of the single source and if there are two source incoherent sources they light coming from the two incoherent sources each of intensity of light is the i naught i naught then total intensity for equal illumination you will observe on the screen and that illumination will be two into i naught but if the two uh, sources are coherent sources and the interference taken place therefore the intensity that at the maxima point that will be four into i naught or intensity at the minima that will be zero again it is the four into i naught for the two coherent sources of light that means if we take only single source we get this amount of intensity i not if we take the two co incoherent sources but they have both have intensity i not then as a result we get a continuous intensity which value is the two into i not and when the two sources are coherent sources and they uh, incident on the screen then we get this type of at the maxima we get the four into i not now beta not beta not it is the central maxima distance between the two minima it is the beta that is the width of the uh, first secondary maxima that is beta so minima to minima distance that is the maxima similarly when we find out the uh, dark fringe width of the dark fringe that is the uh, this distance to this distance it is the width of the dark fringe distance between two successive maxima point 
that is the this uh, width of the dark fringe and distance between two minima that is width of the bright fringes. Now, what is the phase difference at this point? The phase difference is the zero at this point. The phase difference of the two light coming from the two different sources is a pi. At this point, it is a three pi. It is a two pi. That is same phase. Here also four pi. That is the same phase. Here five pi. That is opposite phase. In this way, you can understand where. The constructive and destructive interaction taken place where they are meeting at a zero phase difference or two pi or four pi or six pi. At this point, we get the maximum. That means they are meeting at the same phase. But when the phase difference is a pi or three pi or five pi or seven pi, etc., all these points we get the minima. Now, what is the path difference in this experiment? The path difference at the point it is a zero, zero path difference at the minima. There is lambda by two here also. T lambda by two, it is the five lambda by it is seven lambda by two. Similarly, here it is the uh, three lambda by two, it is the lambda, it is the two lambda. This point path difference here three lambda. That means when the where the path difference is either zero or lambda or a two lambda or three lambda, that's the integral multiple of the lambda. At that point, we get the maxima one. Now we position according to positions. If we plot along this x distance from the central. Distance uh, linear distance linear positions, then at the zero position that means at the origin, we get the central white one. At uh, here, we get the, at the distance that is the 2 into d lambda by 2d, we get the minima. Here, d lambda by d, we get the maxima one. Here, 3 by 2 d lambda by d, that minima. Then 2 into d lambda by d, maxima. Similarly, left hand side, we get similar positions. These are the positions of the maximum minima. And if we plot with the help of the angular position, the angular position that is zero angle, here the angle is the angle subtended. This is the angle subtended at the fifth, fifth position. There is this angle is the angle subtended. There is the lambda by, lambda by 2d. Here it is the lambda divided by d. It is the, the 3 by 2 lambda by d. It is the 2 into lambda by d. That means in the single figure diagram, all the gist of all the phenomena in of young double fit experiment, we can visualize it. Uh, what are the fringe width, the dark fringe width, uh, bright fringe width, next dark fringe width, stage difference at the different point, path difference at the different point, position, uh, linear position, linear distance from the central point, and also the angular position. From this, we can get this. Now, our last topic displacement set of interference fringes. When a thin transparent sheet of igneous T, a reflective index, let us suppose mu, is inserted in the path of one of the interfering beams, the extra path difference introduced. That means in this experiment, internal double sheet experiment, if we introduce one sheet of thickness T and mu is a reflective index, transparent sheet. Now, the path uh, through this, that what is the effective optical path? That will be mu times of the T. That is equivalent path in the air. What will be the effective path or the optical path? That is the mu into T. Mu is the reflective index of this transparent uh, material which thickness is the T. Now, the, obviously, therefore, there will be extra path difference. That means S1O and S2O. Now, these two are not equal optical path. It seems to be equal path physically, but if the optical path is not same, here the optical path is now more. And if we introduce here thickness T, then optical path will be more here. Now S1O point and S2O, these two path are, optical path are not equal. Though uh, it is like to be the physical path are same. Now, what is the, this extra path difference? When a thin transparent sheet of thickness T and reflective index mu is inserted in the path of one of the interfering beams, the extra path difference is, let us suppose there is a delta P. The length of T in the transparent medium minus length T in the air. That means now optical path becomes mu into T, but actually physical path before the inserting, that is the T. Therefore, mu minus one whole into t, that is the path difference. Now, path difference in Young double sheet experiment, p, we already know, x d divided by capital D, or x, that is a position, that will be d p divided by d. Let us the present position of the particular hinges, x is the d p by d. Before the inserting the plug, the position of, position of any 
anything that is the x point or any point on the interference pattern x is the distance from the origin that is the d into path difference by d p is the path difference then the new position of the same fringe will be now path difference is not now remain p any point we are taking any point so dp in place of p now there is extra path difference delta p and now in place of the position of the same thing f that position will be the x dash and that position will be d d p plus delta p and the lateral dispersion of the particular thing on the screen and what will be the shifting of the thing initial position before the inserting the state the position on the screen that particular thing let us suppose that position is the x is the dp path given by d and when we insert extra path difference then what is the shifting that means what is the x dash minus x it is the dispersion of the particular thing or shifting of the particular thing and that is equal to this minus this and we get after getting minus d into if we minus this in this this into delta p by d therefore d by d mu minus one whole into t so delta is equal to beta by lambda mu minus one whole into t the so beta will be d lambda by d equal to we know the beta that is d by d beta by lambda as the shift is independent of n every thing including the central thing or the entire thing system is laterally dispersed by delta x but there is no change in the thing either shift is independent of n every thing including the central thing or the entire thing system is laterally dispersed by delta x there is no change in the fringe width that means there is no effect of the change on the fringe width only there will be shifting of the fringe here. that means if we insert here the fringe will shift in the uh, direction of where uh, in which position the slab is introduced here the fringe shift in along this that means here let us suppose there are five fringes and it is a central point now this central point of these fringes shifted here and similarly in this case if we insert the thickness p in this one condition for sustained type interference now our next topic number one already we have treated all these things now another we disturb this what are the conditions for the sustained interference sustained interference means uh, that will remain uh, sustained that will be seen for a long time number one the two source should be continuously emit waves of same frequency or wavelength that is also the basic condition for the two coherent sources number two the two sources of light would be coherent that is they must vibrate either in same phase or with a constant phase difference between them that means two sources of light would be coherent they must vibrate either in the same phase or with a constant phase difference between them that is also initial condition for a better constant between maxima and minima of intensity the amplitude of the interfering waves would be equal that means if amplitudes are not equal then there will be a uh, there will be a variation of the intensity but you cannot get a 100 or completely dark changes and there will be variations of the brightness on the screen but the amplitude of the inter uh, contrast will be not so good so better contrast between the maximum minima intensity the amplitude of the interfering waves would be equal and generally we are considering in interference pattern of young double slit experiment the fringes uh, the intensity of the two waves coming from the s1 s2 are equal the two sources should be narrow otherwise interference will occur between waves of different parts of the same source and contrast will be poor number five the interfering waves must travel nearly along the same direction or along the same direction or nearly along the same direction that should not be uh, very much direction difference number six the source should be monochromatic otherwise fringes of different color will develop just to give a few observable fringes number seven to have sufficient fringe width the distance between the two coherent sources would be small and the distance between two sources and the screen should be large otherwise 
already we have stated that beta is very very small then we cannot observe with our help of our eye so to find appreciable value of the beta the capital d that should be very large comparable to the small d this is capital d into lambda d very small d lambda is very less therefore we have to increase the value of the capital d now interference pattern with white light what will happen if we consider one white light different component color of white light produces their own interference pattern at the center of the screen the path difference is zero for all such components so bright hinges of different colors overlap at the center consequently the central hinge is white then central hinge that will be white one central bright hinge hinge on the either side of the central white hinges will be colored after a few hinges the interference pattern is lost due to the large overlapping in the hinges and uh, uniform white illumination is seen on the screen that means after a few hinges the interference pattern is lost due to the large overlapping of the hinges so if you ask uh, what will be uh, what will be happen if uh, in place of the monochromatic source of light if we replace the monochromatic source of light by a white light white source of light then we get the central hinge as a white hinge and we get the color hinges uh, around the central bright hinges central white hinges 